Hello, my name is Adam Beasy, and I am the owner-operator of PC Cleric Computer Services, located in Central Florida. The purpose of this video is to provide a brief, non-technical overview on what a domain controller is and how one can be of benefit to your business. First of all, what is a domain controller? A domain controller is a computer running Microsoft Windows Server software that has been promoted to a domain controller. Uh, almost all of the Microsoft Windows Server software supports this feature. It actually comes with uh, Windows Server, uh, but you have to actually promote it to a domain controller yourself. A domain controller provides a security boundary that your computers and users authenticate themselves against. It provides for centralized administration and backup. It makes it much easier to share files, printers, and information uh, across your network. You can create policies for different job roles. You can keep users from turning things on or off. Things like the Windows firewall. If you want that on, you can create a policy that all users within your domain uh, have the Windows firewall turned on. If you want to set up a standard screensaver for all of your users, you can set up which screensaver is standard, how many minutes before the screensaver is turned on, and when the user comes back to his or her computer, whether or not they have to enter a password to re-log on their computer. You can standardize things. You can set a company standard. You can set things like the wallpaper to a company standard, the home page of Internet Explorer to a company standard, and things such as that. Right now, your network looks something probably like this. You have computers, maybe not this many computers, but you definitely do have computers. And you may have a computer here that has a printer attached to it. You have another computer over here that has another printer attached to it. We'll say this is in the boss's office or something like that. You have a maybe you have a Microsoft Windows server that has not been promoted to a domain controller yet and it is hosting some data on it. Now what happens right now currently when this user tries to access the data on this folder or on the server rather the data on this server. What happens is he has to put in a username or password even after he's logged into Windows he still has to provide these additional credentials uh, to be able to access this data. Uh, maybe you've seen it before when you log on to your computer you get a little bubble in the bottom right hand corner that says could not reconnect all network drives. So you gotta put in the username and password for that network drive. It becomes a big administrative hassle uh, especially if somebody changes the password on the server. Now everybody has to get the new password everybody knows what the password is uh, to access the data on that resource. Uh, same thing with printers too. If this user wants to print something to the boss's printer, he needs a username and password that is stored on this computer to be able to do so. So for each and every resource I want to access on each individual computer, I have to have a username and password. They may be the same, they may be different. If the password for this printer changes, then anybody else that wants to use it has to know that password, which means this user is going to have to tell everybody else, hey, I changed the password to the user account that you used to access my printer. Here's the new password. Uh, you know, add it to your list or whatever, and it just becomes a big pain. All these computers are hooked to a router of some type, and then they all go out to the internet. All right, which is no problem there. You can do this even without a domain controller. You don't have to have a domain controller to do this. However, let's take a look at how easy 
things are with a domain controller. Let me clean up my screen. And let me get my pointer back here. Here we go. And this is how your network is going to look in the future once you add that Active Directory domain controller to it. Now, this user here has a resource which is a printer. Okay. This server still has the data that it's sharing out on it. This computer here still has that printer on it. However, we've added a domain controller into the mix, which is this big red guy right up here. Okay. Now, instead of authenticating to the server after this user logs on, what happens is when the computer gets logged onto by the user, instead of authenticating against the computer, he's authenticating against the domain controller. And what this does is this provides just a higher level of security, a higher level of authentication. So now I can access any resource that I have permission to, that's a big thing there, that I have permission to within the domain. So I don't have to provide additional credentials to this data repository. I don't have to provide additional credentials to print to this printer or print to this printer. They're all part of the domain. I have authenticated myself to the domain upon login to Windows. Much easier administratively. I can change my user password on my machine and it really doesn't affect anything because when I change my password it gets changed on the domain controller and I can still access these resources because I have permission to and my password that logs me into Windows lets me access these resources because of the addition of an Active Directory domain controller within my network. Let me clean up my screen. Let me get my pointer back. Okay, so in conclusion, we can see that an Active Directory domain controller provides a security boundary to which your computers and users in your network authenticate against. It provides centralized administration and backup. Centralized administration in the fact that one username, one password to access many resources. And you can set this up on a case-by-case -case basis. Not every user has access to every resource. It makes it much easier to share files, printers, and information across my network and I can create policies for different job roles. If I maybe have uh, a business in which temp workers frequent uh, the office quite a bit, I can set up a group just for the temp workers and those computers are locked down a little bit tighter than your average user would be because they are temp workers. Uh, again, my name is Adam Vizi. I am the owner of PC Cleric Computer Services located in Central Florida. If you have any questions, comments, or would like further information, give me a call at the number listed um, at the bottom of this slide. Thank you for viewing my video. I hope you found it informative.